I've found amazing museums tucked into the side streets of Paris. On December 21, 1936, the sumptuous residence of the Count de Commando opened its doors and its precious collections to the public. Since then, very little has changed in the building. The mansion, built between 1911 and 1914, is almost entirely dedicated to 18th century French decorative art. All throughout his life, Moisy de Comano, an enlightened art enthusiast, collected wood paneling, tapestries, carpets, furniture, and objets d'art made by the royal workshops and the most talented craftsmen of the 18th century. It had been de Commando's great hope that his son Nissim, whom he adored, would take over the family empire. But Nissim joined the French army to fight in World War I and was killed in battle in 1917, breaking Moisy's heart. In memory of his son Nissim, he bequeathed his life's work to the Musée d'Art Décoratif, offering the public an exceptional opportunity to travel through time and experience the elegance a belle époque Paris. The entry hall is lined in stucco stone from the Ile de France and furnished with a mahogany writing table, a large mahogany and bronze clock, and a fountain in the form of a shell made of red marble. At the foot of the monumental staircase is a white marble statue depicting Venus and love. A huge kitchen is mandatory for a mansion. This one was equipped with a coal-burning central cooker and cast iron wall-mounted rotisserie. The central cooker with two fireboxes heated four ovens and two steamers. Large pieces of meat were roasted on a spit in the central rotisserie, flanked by two wood and gas-operated grills. The servants' dining room accommodated 16 domestic staff members needed to serve meals. With only eight seats, the dining room seems proportionately small, but certainly elegant. Green wood paneling supports four embroidered petite point panels decorated with vases of flowers and a huge Beauvoir tapestry entitled Net Fishing. The candelabra is a late 18th century. Notice the sterling silver serving set, as well as some unusual decorations, such as this statue of an African woman. There was a whole room dedicated to dishes called the porcelain room. These dishes all date from the late 18th century. The bird decor come from Count de Buffon's Natural History of Birds, published in 10 volumes. The names of the shown bird is inscribed on the underside of each piece. This room is called Le Grand Bureau, or in English, the large study. The tapestry shows scenes from the fables of La Fontaine. Note the large foyer's chairs in the roll-top desk. Clocks, barometers, candelabras, and vases all add to the style. Before television, people liked to read. The library here includes about a thousand books. Count Commodo was a fan of periodicals and catalogs as well. This was called the Blue Room, a study that was converted from the Count's wife's bedroom. They divorced after she had an affair with the stable boy.
This room is called the Small Study, featuring sketches painted by Jean-Baptiste Audry, dating from 1737. I've always loved art, as noted by the multiple paintings hung in my house, although, of course, they're not as classic as these. This octagonal drawing room sits at the center of the house overlooking the garden. It was designed to house a suite of painted pastoral scenes by Jean-Baptiste Hewitt, and so is called the Hewitt's Salon. You may remember this photo from earlier in this documentary. The woman on the left is Beatrice de Comodo, Moishi's other child and Nissan's sister. Moishi died in 1935, leaving his estate to the French Art Academy. However, his daughter continued to live in the estate, certain that with her prominence, the Nazis would ignore her. She was wrong. In 1943, she was arrested, and she and her two children were murdered in one of the concentration camps, ending the Commodo Line. The next time you're in Paris, take a couple of hours to explore the Musée Nissim de Commando. You'll be glad you did. This is Dr. Philip Levin with Doctor's Dreams Videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.